This video is presented by EA Game Changers. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. Today is another speed build using the new Sims 4 Tiny Living Stuff Pack. So I think the pack is public right now. Like by the time this video goes up, I'm pretty sure that you guys can get your hands on the pack as well and start playing with it. So I know in the beginning of this video, it says that it's brought to you by Game Changers, but since you guys have the pack now, it's it's not brought to you by EA Game Changers anymore. It's brought to you by me. This is my video. Um, yeah, I think like we only have to use that disclosure if we are posting content before it's available to the public. But yeah, I'm pretty sure you guys can get your hands on it now. So if you have gotten it already, or if you plan to get it later today, let me know and let me know what you think about it. Let me know what you think about it once you've like actually played with it and had the pack in your hands because I feel like out of all the stuff packs we've gotten, this one is actually like a hit um, compared to like, you know, my first pet stuff and like Moschino stuff pack. I liked it, but some people didn't like it, but I feel like Tiny Living is one that people are actually hyped about and I'm actually so happy that people like it. Um, but anyways, before I even talk about anything else, I need to tell you guys what I'm doing in this video because it's weird. It's super weird. Um, you guys probably know already by the title and you're probably thinking like, why? <laughs> like, why would you do this? What made you think of this? And honestly, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know why I'm doing this. It's such a weird concept. Basically, obviously you guys know by the title, but I'm turning the pancakes home into a tiny home so like a legitimate tiny home that meets the requirements of the new tiny living pack so as you saw in the beginning this home was like full size we all know the classic pancakes home that is in willow creek um it's pretty big i think it was like 300 almost 400 tiles and if you guys don't know a tiny home a tier three tiny home the maximum amount of tiles you can have is 100 in order for it to be considered a tiny home or what they call a small home and then you get like lot benefits and stuff so I think for this one it is you get reduced bills and I think you're like happier more often I think or you're like happier with people like your relationships build faster I'm pretty sure that's what the benefit is but I know I when I started this video, I didn't know what tier I was going to be able to get this home. Obviously, I'd want to get it as small as possible, but as I was doing it, I just realized, oh my goodness, this is so hard. If I can at least get it to 100 tiles, I will be happy. And I didn't want to just make it as small as possible. I still wanted it to somewhat resemble the pancakes home. So I didn't want to, obviously, as you guys see, or as you guys will see, I don't change wallpaper or windows or the roof or the facade, really. I obviously shrink it down a lot, but I didn't want it to resemble anything other than the pancake home. So if you looked at it, I want you to think like, oh, that's the pancakes home, but why does it look like that? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's obviously way, way smaller. And my kind of tactic here was to just like start from the outside and go like one square in at a time and just like reduce it by one row then reduce it again by one row just so I could retain the general like proportion and shape of the home. I feel like if I just like cut it in half right away it could have ended up kind of like lopsided or not quite proportionally correct so I feel like this was the best way that I could slowly chip away at the home until I got it to the size I needed. So in the beginning, it was kind of easy, like, okay, like, I'm slowly doing this, like, we're going places, like, it's happening, and then right about now, where I got it just under 200 tiles, I started to realize, what else am I going to be able to take away? Like, am I going to have to take away the second floor? Like, how am I going to make this under 100 tiles? Like, my goal was to get it to 64, but then once I was at this point, I was like, I, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get it to 100. Um, you can see, like, uh, all the furniture is, like, everywhere. Because I turned on move objects so that none of the furniture would, like, delete and stuff. So I could still, like, retain their furniture in the home when I actually did the interior. 
but it's kind of weird. This was like an idea that I have been sitting on since before a tiny stuff pack was announced. So you guys know that every time there's a new pack, I kind of like to do weird things with like the default townie homes, like the goth home. I have like a weird obsession with renovating the goth home and making it into like different versions of itself, if you know what I mean. I did the goth home in an alternate universe where I made it instead of like a black castle, like what it is now, I made it into like this white, bright, like polar opposite thing that like still has the same shape, but it's kind of different. And then I also made the goth home into a beach house with Discovery University. So that was not Discovery University. What am I saying? With um, Island Living. So that was pretty fun. And as you can see here, wait, let me just interrupt my story. I made it to 100 tiles, you guys, exactly 100 tiles. And what I ended up doing is like deleting that little like roof piece, um, which is, you know, it worked. I don't really care, you know, what I had to do, but it worked and the facade still looks relatively similar. So it is exactly 100 tiles, you guys. It is exactly meets the requirements for a tier three tiny home, or I guess it's called small home, but you know, it it's good. I accomplished my goal. Um, but what was I saying? Yeah, I, I've done like weird things with the goth house, like made it into um, a beach home and stuff. I'll link all those videos down below if you are interested, but I was going to make the goth home into a tiny home and then I was like, you know, I've done the goth home so much, why don't I do a different classic townie home? And I was just like, you know, let's do the pancakes. Like, why not? This is also an iconic home. I do really like the interior of this home too. I was also just kind of sick of dealing with the goth furniture and how like gothic and like vampy it looks. So. I feel like the pancakes home is just like a nice change because the interior is like semi-normal like I can work with this um you will see in this renovation now I'm like pretty much onto the interior you can see like their furniture is all over the lawn and just everywhere because obviously it all doesn't fit into this home anymore because I've literally less than half the home I think I've like quartered it it went from like 400 tiles or more to 100 so obviously this isn't going to fit anymore um so what i'm doing is i am similar to my love it or list it series where i try and um use the existing furniture when i renovate i'm going to be using their existing furniture for this home as well so as much as possible i want this home to still resemble the pancakes home so stuff like their kitchen and dining room which have like very, you know, notable um, wallpaper and floor combos. Like that kitchen is like so totally pancake kitchen, like that yellow um, wallpaper with the black and white tile, like that just screams, you know, pancakes kitchen. So I kept that obviously, but it's, you know, half the size. The dining room is tiny. Um, and for the most part, what I'm starting to do is just placing their existing furniture into the home and trying to make it look, trying to give it the same vibe as how it was when it was a full-sized home. And then you will see kind of later in the video, I start to like substitute out furniture to replace it with the new tiny living furniture because I didn't want to just make this build like completely base game and keep all of their furniture. I did want to sub out some of the stuff and include some of that cool new furniture we got with the tiny living stuff pack. So you will see me do that later. But right now I'm just kind of trying to like lay down the foundation and stuff. And you can tell that it still does, in my opinion, look like the pancakes home. Even like the living room, like the vibe of the living room, you know, the wallpaper is exactly the same. The couch, the um, carpet, everything is like pretty much the same. It's just tiny. It's just tiny, you guys. And I feel like it's still very playable. You'll see at the end, the home is completely playable and maybe even better than what it was before. Like, I don't know. I've actually never renovated the Pancakes home in general the full-size home. I've never renovated it before, so maybe I should do that for a Love It or List It series um, or episode. I'm not really sure, but yeah. Um, so what what else? What is going on? So obviously, I had to like, delete a lot of the countertops. 
yeah because like the kitchen's like a quarter of the size now so we don't need all of those um and also if you guys saw my renovation yesterday i renovated the default starter home that came with tiny living it came with like a micro 32 tile home and i renovated it and it was i said in the video that i wasn't sure if it was built by sim guru ninja or not sim guru ninja by the way is one of the developers obviously if you don't know um so i i was pretty sure that sim guru ninja built that home and and in the video i said that and then it turns out he actually watched my video and he like quoted me on twitter being like dr ashley said that you know it's not the worst build in the world <laughs> and he's like wow that's like so nice of you or something like that and i was like oh my goodness i should have said nicer things like had i known that dave was gonna watch the video like i would have i would have said like it's the best build in the world <laughs> but instead i was like yeah you know it's not the worst thing in the world but maybe we can fix it up a little bit so i'm just joking by the way like obviously i love sim guru ninja and and you know he's been a producer and developer at the sims for a long time so he probably has some you know good building skills and stuff like that but anyways I thought that was so funny it's kind of like oh maybe I should you know be careful of what I say in these videos because like what if they what if they watch and what if they don't like what I say but it's all fun and games anyways the sims team always encourages us to like you know say what's on our mind and like speak the truth and like not hold back and I think that's what I really love about the sims team is like they can definitely take criticism especially when it's constructive and that's just how it goes and that's why I love this community we're all very vocal and we're all you know not afraid to speak our mind and and they like that so it's all truth over here you guys um but here you can see I am basically doing the back garden and with the backyard I it, I didn't really change anything obviously just because you have a tiny home doesn't mean you can not have a big backyard so I just kind of like reposition everything to make it, you know, enclosed again and bring their backyard to in line with the home. You guys know what I'm trying to say. I can't really speak properly right now. It's 9.20 p.m. right now. And um, usually at this time, I would tap out and be like, okay, no, I'll, I'll just do this voiceover another time. But today I was like, no, like, let's do it. <laughs> let's just do the voiceover. Like, why not? So yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of tired now. But I must say that this home, um, the backyard is quite nice. Like it's, it has a lot of landscaping. Like it's very um, fruitful. <laughs> is that the right word? Um, it's, it's very, it's quite nice. I mean, as far as like backyards and like landscaping goes for a default home, especially in the base game, like I'm not too mad at it. It's really pretty, and I, it was so pretty. I just didn't even want to like touch it. Like I just copied exactly what it was. Um, also, I'm not like the best at doing backyards. That's like the thing. The next thing I think I need to work on. So I told you guys that I wasn't good at like roofing in like the very very beginning. Obviously, I think I'm pretty good at roofing now. Um, and then I wasn't very good at landscaping. And now I think I'm pretty good at landscaping. But one thing that I don't think I'm very good at is backyards or gardens, or whatever you want to call it. I call it a backyard, but basically, I've lived in a condo, like, in downtown for a lot of my life now that I kind of forget what backyards look like. Like, I kind of forget what, what is a natural backyard supposed to look like, so, and, like, what do you put in it? Like, just, like, swing sets, like, gardening? Like, I don't, I don't really know what you would realistically put when I was a kid and I had a backyard, I just had, like, a big open field of grass that I'd run around in. Like, I didn't have, like, swing sets and stuff. Aren't those really expensive? Um, but yeah, anyways, now my whole backyard rant is over. We're getting back into the interior, and what we are doing now is exactly what I was saying before, where I'm kind of, like, substituting out some items for the tiny living items, just to make sure that you guys know that, like, this is a tiny living build it's not just a base game tiny home like you actually you know you want to like use some of the space saving items that they give us and they gave us that really cute coffee table in that brown color i think goes really well in this living room you know this living room is very like kind of trying to be elegant with the white and the wallpaper and the fine china on the wall and i feel like that small little coffee table is so perfect in something like this and look those poofs did you know that those poofs could act as like side tables like you can put lamps and stack stuff on it 
and like it actually works so I didn't know that the poofs acted like that like I didn't know that they were like functional as a side table and that you could like stack lamps and other objects on it but I was so excited when I saw that that was actually a thing because I wasn't expecting that um so yeah I just kind of like substituted in those for like side tables and I kept the lamps I kept the original lamps but I did sub out the couch like that base game couch is just so plain I feel like the base game furniture like the graphics don't look that good it looks less detailed and stuff so I I didn't want to go with that plain couch instead I like substituted it for the tiny living couch but kept the same color scheme so kept it with that like white swatch and stuff so that's exactly what I was saying earlier about how the tiny living stuff pack is so versatile because it does come with those really bright colors like the turquoises and the oranges and the yellows that can be kind of like overwhelming but you can you know tone it down a little bit and use like the white and gray swatches as well and use it in a build like this where it will you know blend in with a more like regular livable homey you know, non-orange and yellow home. So that's what I really like about that pack because I think that, you know, it can be used in a lot of different scenarios. So upstairs is where it got kind of challenging. So this was obviously like a two bedroom, two bathroom home, I'm pretty sure, because Bob had a room and Eliza had her own room too, and they each had their own bathroom. So now upstairs there's like barely any room for either of those things so I could only fit one bathroom up here and I did decide to make it kind of like Eliza's bathroom with the pink wallpaper and the flooring and all of that stuff because Bob's bathroom wasn't that exciting so if I wanted it to resemble one or the other I did choose Eliza and because her iconic pink bathroom um, and I just like switched out the appliances to the new tiny living ones because you know why not also I don't don't really care about bathrooms anyway so whatever um, but here you can see that Bob I think it was Bob Bob did have a desk in his bedroom but we don't have room for that two tile desk anymore so I was really happy that I was able to use the new tiny living one tile desk because I think that it works really great with this little nook right here um, behind the stairs it's just the perfect place for it and I'm so glad that we finally got another one tile desk that isn't the one that comes with city living because that one's a little bit bulky but this one's quite sleek and very compact and definitely a tiny item um so here is where I kind of had to like decide what I was going to do with the bed situation they both have big double beds and I wanted to give one of them the new Murphy bed but Eliza's bed was just so like fancy and pink that I don't think that substituting it for a Murphy bed would have like kept the same vibe if you know what I mean so I did end up going um, with the Murphy bed for Bob's bed because his bed was just like modern and black and plain so I thought that it would be a good opportunity to use the new black swatch Murphy bed so I think that it still kind of resembles his his like aesthetic his room was super plain before too so it's it, you're really not losing out on much if you know what I mean whereas Eliza's room had a little bit more character to it it was kind of like very pink and like kind of over the top kind of extra so I did try and keep as much of her furniture as possible it kind of reminded me of Cassandra Goth's room to be honest like if you look at their furniture side by side um, they do have a lot of the same furniture it's just like Cassandra Goth had all like the magenta and purple swatches and Eliza has like the pink swatches so I did keep most of her furniture. I did sub out some things a little bit later, like I subbed out her side table and stuff, but most of the tiny living furniture definitely went to like Bob's side of the room. Um, and you will see that I don't actually have separate bedrooms for them, so they do share this kind of loft space, I guess is what you would call it. It's kind of weird, but you know what? That's what happens when you live in a two-story, 100-tile home. So they're just going to have to live with it. Or aren't they Aren't they married? Yeah, I mean, they don't need a... Do they need their own bedroom? I don't really know. Am I missing something here? Um, but anyways, what I ended up doing to kind of give them a little bit of room separation is a trick that I've done before. 
and I think that this trick will come in handy for a lot of future tiny home builds is I kind of faked this pull across curtain thing so I just like put up the wall then put these curtains on it to make it look like they could potentially like pull that curtain across the entire way to separate out their room so if she needed some privacy she could pull the curtain across or if he wanted to just be in his little desk over there he could do that so obviously it's not a functional curtain but it is like a trick that I do like to do I used to do it a lot when I would renovate the apartments in city living because some of the apartments are really small that it it works to have like that little curtain trick so I think that's a nice little added touch that I'll definitely be using in a lot of my future tiny home builds um so if you didn't know that trick now you know um but here you can see I'm just like adding more tiny living new furniture to Bob's side I mean Bob deserved a couple more pieces of furniture all his room had before was like that black bed that weird purple nightlight <laughs> and then he had that apple crate so I kept his apple crate um to use as a side table and then I just like added a couple more tiny living furniture pieces here and there and I think they work really nicely together to be honest like they it looks very like compact and very like it looks very squishy up here but like that's what I kind of like about it I kind of like the whole tiny living, having everything just be kind of like squished in and like slotted in perfectly. It's not supposed to be spacious. I understand that and I hope you guys do too. But yeah, I do kind of, I, I don't know, like I like how it turned out and it definitely feels very tiny home-esque. Um, the bottom is a little bit more spacious than the top. The bottom seems like a pretty decently sized home at the bottom. Like you can technically have people over. It's you know, it's a fun time down here. Like, I don't really feel like you're missing out too much on the bottom floor. Like, it feels like a regular home to me, in my opinion. Um, it's just the top part that feels very squishy and, and tiny living-y, if you know what I mean. But kind of gets back to the point I was saying about how 100 tiles, to me, doesn't necessarily feel like a tiny home. It definitely feels like a small home, um, but it's interesting how they put 100 tiles in like a tiny home pack because it's not really that tiny it's just small maybe if it was for like four or eight sims or something then yeah this would be tiny but I mean for the two of them I feel like it's you know pretty comfortable but yeah the build is pretty much coming to an end I can't believe how quickly that voiceover went I feel like I was talking really fast or something but I don't know besides that I hope you guys liked this video I know it was kind of weird kind of different kind of like why would I do this but I don't know I've just been like really feeling like doing this for a long time even before the tiny home living pack came out like I wanted to do this so let me know if there's any other classic towny homes you want me to make tiny and I will definitely try and do that I think that this was such a fun video to make it was definitely a nice challenge you guys know that I love challenges but I feel like the screenshots should be rolling right now which means it is time for me to go. But besides that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up and leave a comment down below what you thought about it. And if this is our first time meeting, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you wanna be friends or if you wanna see more Sims 4 videos. I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Bye everybody.